Hello everyone and welcome back to where I sometimes talk about thrillers on Thursdays and I am excited to film today's video because it's the only video of mine that I will continually go back and rewatch throughout the year because now whenever I go into a bookshop from now on for the rest of the year I'm going to refer back to this video to see which books I want to pick up. I'm very excited to sit down and film. I've been gone the last couple of weekends so I'm just glad I have a chance to film now. I'm going to be talking through 10 books. They're mainly horror with a couple of thrillers and one historical fiction that seems honestly more more disturbing than any of the books on this list. It's also a fun list because only three of these books are by authors I think that I've read before. So if you've read other books by these authors please let me know because a lot of these authors are new names to me. I'm going to talk through these 10 books in order of their release date. So the fun thing almost about me filming this in March which is a little bit late I know is that I think four, four of these or so have already been released. So I'm probably going to be ordering these soon and if you're interested in picking some of these up you already can. I'm going to go ahead and get started but if you don't see any books that you're really excited about for new releases for 2024 please go ahead and put them down below so I can go ahead and check those out too. At number 10 is Night Watching by Tracy Sierra and this came out on February 1st. This is one of the few thrillers on the list because a lot of the others are going to be more straight up horror but this is about a mom who is home alone with her two young children during a blizzard and she sees a figure of a man in the house so she hustles her children to a little part of the house with a secret room concealed behind a wall. I think part of the book is going to be waiting it out as he's going through the house. Part of it's trying to decide whether or not to escape. And I know that might sound kind of simple in terms of a plot, but I've realized in terms of myself that I love home invasion stories. I think I like them so much because they feel the most realistic in terms of any type of thriller or horror novel out there. We've all been home alone and heard something. And so I think they just tend to hit me a lot harder than books that might be a little bit more out there. So if you have any other home invasion stories, please let me know because I don't actually feel like a lot of these tend to come out that often. Then this came out on February 13th is An Education in Malice by S.T. Gibson. This is described as a fantasy horror romance so a little mix of everything but this takes place in the Forgotten Hills of Massachusetts where stands St. Perpetua's College. And on her first day of class Laura Sheridan is thrust into an intense academic rivalry with beautiful and enigmatic Carmilla. One of this author's very popular books is Dowry of Blood which I have not read. If you have please let me know but I love a fun story that takes place with someone being whisked away to a unique university or high school. I know a lot of people don't like romance thrown into creepier books but I am all for it. But again this much like the last book I have not read anything by this author so I'm going in a little bit blind but just this really I feel like this would be really fun during the fall but I'm probably going to pick it up pretty soon. Then is Murder Road by Simone St. James and this came out on March 4th. It starts off in July of 1995. Our protagonists are April and Eddie who are on their honeymoon and they've taken a wrong turn as they're heading to a a small resort town where they plan to spend their honeymoon. They come across someone wandering down the road who they assume is a hitchhiker but then the hitchhiker is bleeding and they later die in the hospital. This says this isn't a spoiler it says it in every plot summary and what they learn is that unexplained murders have been happening along Atticus Line that's the road for years and the cops have finally found two witnesses them who easily become their only suspects and I think some super natural elements might be involved as well. As many of you might have seen if you watch my videos I read Sundown Motel um, last year and absolutely loved it. I loved her writing style. I loved the mystique of the town in Sundown Motel. It's one of those authors where, where, I, where I've read one book and I just know that I really enjoy her writing style overall. So Murder Road, I feel like it's not the catchiest name if I'm honest but I'm really really excited to pick it up. Then is Haunting of Volkwood by Gwendolyn Kist. I apologize if I'm pronouncing that name wrong. I will admit I keep wanting to say Gwendolyn Christie and I'm like oh my god she wrote a book that's incredible. But this came out on March 5th. The premise of this sounds so much fun. This is about childhood friends who miraculously survive the night that everyone in their suburban neighborhood turns to ghosts and disappears. So Velkwood vicinity was the topic of occult theorists, tabloid one-hour documentaries, and even pseudoscientific investigations as the block of homes disappeared behind a near impenetrable veil that only the three survivors could enter and only one has in the past 20 years until now. So a researcher tracks down our protagonist now that she is an adult and offers to pay her to come back into the vicinity. So I get the impression I could be wrong this is going to vacillate forward and backward in time as you learn what happened that caused this maybe veil 
to appear over the town, but it sounds just really, really bizarre. And in the tagline, it said, if you like the TV show Yellow Jackets, which I, de which I definitely do, that you would like this as well. But the premise of this, I'm still a little confused by, but it just overall seems so fun and weird and I'm really excited. And again, never read anything by this author before. Then is The Angel of Indian Lake by Stephen Graham Jones. Now this is the third novel in his series and I'm halfway through the second novel. I have the first novel, My Heart is a Chainsaw, somewhere up here. I'm halfway through Don't Fear the Reaper right now and The Angel of Indian Lake again is going to be the conclusion to the series. My Heart is a Chainsaw is told from the point of view of a high school girl in Idaho who's obsessed with slashers. I won't say too much beyond that and again because I'm half Way through Don't Fear the Reaper. I've not read any summaries about the Angel of Indian Lake or what it's about because then I might get spoiled. But Stephen Graham Jones has just become one of my favorite horror writers, so I cannot wait to check this out. And the Angel of Indian Lake comes out March 26th. Next is, I don't know why this feels surprising to me this, that this is on the list, but it is, and that is You Like It Darker, Stories by Stephen King, and this comes out May 21st. Now, the reason I say it shouldn't be surprising given that I review a lot of horror novels that I'm, you know, Stephen King is on this list, but I personally do not pick up a lot of Stephen King new releases. I've read some of his older novels, but I, I haven't read any of, for example, the Holly Gibney series. And I actually don't think I've read really many of his short stories before. But this is 12 short stories that delve into the darker part of life, both metaphorical and literal. Um, one of the stories apparently is Rattlesnakes, which is a sequel to Cujo. But, but again, I literally can't remember the last time I picked up a newer Stephen King book. So it'd be fun to kind of actually read it along with everybody else. So excited to pick that one up. Then is the one that I will be honest, this is the last one that I added to my list as I was researching books. I read so many lists and watch videos online. And this one is not one I saw in a lot of upcoming horror releases. I saw this one, I think in like a Reddit comment randomly somewhere. But that is Butcher by Joyce Carol Oates, and this comes out May 21st. This is historical fiction, and it sounds horrifying. This is the harrowing story based on authentic historical documents. We follow the career of Dr. Silas Weir, who is the father of gynopsychiatry. So he is humiliated by a procedure gone terribly wrong, and so he is forced to take a position at the New Jersey Asylum for Female Lunatics. And there he is able to go unchecked for decades, making a name for himself by focusing on women who have been neglected by the state, women he subjects to the most grotesque modes of experimentation. I read a little bit more about um, a woman that he becomes kind of obsessed with named Bridget. And I'm not clear because I stopped reading because it almost felt like, and it was a very quick summary, but it started to feel like it might've been a little spoilerish, but I'll just say, I'm really hoping this book is also about his downfall and that better happen or else it's just gonna feel very uncomfortable reading all of this. But what I find so interesting is again, this is historical fiction and it's narrated by his eldest son um, in real life who is, you know, horrified by the things that his father has done. So I just think this is terrifying, but also fascinating. And again, it's not on a lot of those horror top lists you're gonna see online, um, even though it seems a lot more horrifying than anything else, honestly, on this list. And when I was, I want to say in my early 20s, I read one book by Joyce Carol Oates, could not tell you what it was called, but I do remember thinking that her writing is incredible, so I'm sure it's going to be written beautifully as well. Then is Horror Movie by Paul Tremblay, and this comes out June 11th. This takes place in 1993, and a group of young guerrilla filmmakers spent four weeks making horror movie, a notorious disturbing art house horror flick. And the weirdest part is that only three of the film scenes were ever released to the public, but horror movie has nevertheless grown a rabid fan base. Three decades later, Hollywood is pushing for a big budget reboot, and the only surviving cast member, I believe that's going to be our narrator, comes involved. And I love the idea. I know that this isn't technically found footage, but I recently became really obsessed with the Hell House <laughs> series, and some are not very good, um, the movies. Um, and I I don't know why the plot line does not seem that similar, but some, I don't know why, just reading it's giving me similar energy. So I'm really excited for it. I've read some of Paul Tremblay's other books, so I'm sure the writing in this is going to be wonderful. But again, the premise of this, I just think sounds so interesting. <laughs> Next is Cuckoo by Gretchen Felker Martin, and this comes out June 11th. I'll, I'm just gonna read what it says online for this because I cannot honestly think of a way to summarize this. So I'm just gonna read the little snippet that I've seen online. Something evil is very deep in the desert. It wants your body, it wears your skin. 
In the summer of 1995, seven queer kids abandoned by their parents at a remote conversion camp come face to face with it. They survived, but at camp resolution, everybody leaves a different person. 16 years later, only the scared and broken survivors of that terrible summer can put an end to the horror before it's too late. The fate of the world depends on it. So a lot of different elements are going on in this. I've never read anything by this author before. I know that they wrote Manhunt, which please let me know if you read Manhunt and if you think I should read it. I think I put it on my TBR a long time ago and for whatever reason just never got around to picking it up, but I heard really good things about it and this is their newest release, so I'm definitely in. And last but not least is So Thirsty by Rachel Harrison and this comes out September 10th. And for this, our character is Sloane Parker, who's kind of dreading her birthday is just a sign that she's getting older, her husband's cheating on her, and her longtime best friend and trouble troublemaker Naomi goes with her on kind of a weekend to get away for her birthday. And her friend Naomi orchestrates a wild night out with a group of mysterious strangers, only for it to take a horrifying turn that, that changes Sloane's and Naomi's lives literally forever. I read The Return a long time ago and I did like it, but I just think the premise of this sounds so fun. It sounds like, and I could be wrong, that Naomi's trying to get Sloane out a little bit of a rut. So maybe she kind of sets up a kind of scary weekend, but then it escalates too far. I'm not sure, but I'm just really, really intrigued. So those are the 10 books that I'm so excited to be picking up this year. Please again, let me know if there are any other books that I missed or if there are any on this list that you definitely want to see a review of, and I will push those maybe a little bit higher in my reading list. But I hope you all are doing well and staying safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.